everyone. In this video, we're going to start talking about spatial statistics. And more specifically, we're going to talk about a very, very widely used model in spatial stats called the Krigging model. Now, let me give you a bit of a context so we're not just doing math and formulas for the rest of this video. Let's say you're a very famous biologist and your whole career has been focused on exploring this big island. Now, you've gone back to the island several times and you've taken measurements at each of these red dots on the island. So assume there's many, many measurements. At each measurement, you have two pieces of information. The first is xi. xi is a measure of the location of that coordinate. So it could be a latitude longitude, it could be some xy. It basically just gives you a geographic pinpoint of where that location is. The other piece of information you have is yi. yi is the elevation in feet or meters or whatever at that point on the island. Now, as many data points as you have, sometimes in your research it comes up that you need to get the elevation at a point on the island where you did not explicitly collect data. So, for example, let's say that at this black dot right here, you care about the elevation there for some reason, but you never collect data there. Now, also, you don't have the time or resources to go fly all the way back to the island and collect an elevation measurement there. So you're going to have to do the next best thing. The next best thing is, of course, use the existing data that you have in order to make a good prediction about what's the elevation at that point. Now, as with many things in stats, we make predictions about unknown quantities based on things that are similar to this unknown quantity. We're going to do the same thing in this spatial statistical concept, except here similarity will mean literal geographic similarity. So what I've done here, you'll notice there's five closest red dots to this unknown point. And I've zoomed that picture in down here. So in the middle, we have y underscore new, which is the unknown elevation. And then we have y1 through y5, which are the five elevations of the five closest neighbors geographically to our unknown point. So the Krigging model is basically going to say that our prediction about the elevation at the unknown point is going to be some linear combination of the elevations at my five closest neighbors. Makes sense. So let me go ahead and write the model out now. We're going to say that y nu, which is the elevation at the unknown point, is going to be w transpose y. And that's the matrix form, but if I want to write it out fully, it's going to be w1, y1, plus w2, y2, plus dot dot dot, plus w5, y5. And the part I left out was the error epsilon nu. So how you read this mathematical formula in English basically says that if I want to predict the elevation at my unknown point, I'm going to say it's some linear combination. So it's going to be some combination of y1, y2, and y5, where the uh, each of these elevations is weighted, has a weight w1 through w5, because I might care about some of my neighbors more than others. And then I, of course, add an error, because I'm never going to be exactly correct. I'm going to be off by hopefully a little bit. And that's what the Krigging model is. So in a nutshell, this is the Krigging model. Now, the only unknown here, right, if I knew what the weights were, W1 through W5, then I could just plug in the weights, I could plug in my five known elevations, and I could get a pretty good prediction about what my new elevation should be. But how am I going to get at those weights? Well, the only other piece of information I have here are the distances between my unknown point to my five closest neighbors. And maybe just kind of crudely, the closer one of my neighbors is to me, maybe the more weight I should give it, the further away it is, maybe the less weight I should give it, but how do I formalize this idea? And this is where we use this thing called a variogram in spatial stats. I wanted to make sure to include the variogram in this video because it's such a widely used tool, such a widely used graph in spatial stats. So I wanted to give you first some exposure to it, and then we'll see how it's used in the context of the Krigging model. So the first thing to understand the variogram is this function. And this function is basically gamma of two points, xi and xj. Remember, x is the literal spatial placement of that point, where it is geographically. So if I put in two points, xi and xj, then gamma of xi and xj is simply given by one half yi minus yj squared. And the y's, remember, are the elevations. So the story that this equation is telling 
it's basically saying that uh, if I put in two points, any two points, let's say uh, this guy and this guy, so this is my xi, this is my xj, then the function is basically one half of the difference in elevation between those two points. And what would we kind of expect from this function? We would expect that the closer two points are in space, the smaller gamma would be, right? Because if I'm here in space and I take one step to my right, that's a very small change in distance. So my elevation should also not be that different. Whereas if I'm here and I go walk a mile away, then I would expect my elevation to potentially change by a lot. So we're thinking that the closer two points are together, the closer xi and xj are to each other, the smaller this yi minus yj will be, therefore the smaller gamma should be. So using those intuitions, let's draw a graph of what we expect h versus gamma of h to look like. And h is going to be the distance between two points. So as the distance goes up, we expect that the gamma, or this function of the difference in elevations, should also go up. So maybe it starts like this, it's going up, it's going up, but we expect it at some point to plateau off. Why do we expect it to plateau off at some point? Well, here's the story. Whether you are, let's say, a hundred, like miles away, whether your two points are 100 miles away or whether they're 200 miles away, you're not expecting your gamma to change by all that much. Because basically you're saying, if I'm here and I go walk 100 miles versus if I'm here and I walk 200 miles, I'm not expecting this function to be all that different. So that's why we're expecting this guy to plateau off. Now, there's a couple uh, important points in this graph that I want to tell you about because they have very specific terminology in spatial statistics. And the first one is the funniest name. This is called the nugget. So the nugget is the y value here where the graph begins. And some of you are thinking, shouldn't the nugget always be zero? Because if my distance is zero, I'm expecting the difference in elevation to also be zero. Well, theoretically, yes. But of course, this is a theoretical variogram. And let me actually write the name. So this is called a variogram. So this is called a variogram. This is a theoretical variogram, but if you look at this island, let's say we take two sets of points that are distance h away. So this point and this point are distance h away, and then this point and this point are distance h away, but they might have different, uh, they might have different elevation differences. So for example, if that h were here, one of the points might have gamma this, and the other point might have gamma this. So a true variogram looks more like a cloud, where it's not a single line, but rather kind of shape. It's just that the variogram we fit to the data is the best fit. And that's what we end up calling the theoretical variogram versus the actual variogram. Okay? So uh, that's why we have a nugget. The higher the nugget is, the more noisy our data. Because it's basically saying that for all sets of points that are distance zero from each other, or almost zero from each other, very close, we should have that the elevation difference is zero. The higher the elevation difference is, the more noisy there is, uh, the more noise there is in our data. So that's the first one. The second one is called the sill. So the sill is the ceiling of the variogram, where it can no longer get higher than a certain value. And the point where it first hits the sill, let's say it's around here, this is called the range. So the range is the h value or the distance value at which point the variogram hits the sill. So these are three important terms in spatial stats. So why did we go through this whole discussion of the variogram? Now we're gonna tie this variogram back to our Krigging model. I thought about going through the math behind the Krigging model, but I did make that video even, but it got a little bit convoluted. So I want to give you kind of the watered down version. And if you still want me to go through all of it, go ahead and leave a comment below. But what it boils down to is that solving the Krigging model, solving for these weights W, ends up basically just solving a matrix equation. Solving something where we have a matrix A, times our weights w, so w is just a vector of w1 through w5, is equal to some other uh, vector b. Now a is comprised of variogram functions between xi and xj, where xi through xj are my five points that are my neighbors of the unknown point. Now b is also comprised of variogram functions, but it's between xi's, which are my five points I care about, and 
the x new, which is the new point that I would like data for. So basically to solve this, it would just be taking the inverse, so I get w is equal to a inverse b, and that would be solving for my w, w hat maybe. So that is my predicted weights, or my best weights. I take my best weights, I plug them into my Kriging model, and I get a prediction for the elevation at my unknown point. And that's why the variogram is important in order to fit the Kriging model uh, and find these weights w. Now the last thing I want to talk about in this video is when should you use the Kriging model? We just spent the last several minutes talking about this really cool model in spatial stats called the Kriging model. But if, as with all models, there are certain situations where you should and should not use it. And I wanted to leave the assumptions till the end because it relies on some stuff we just learned. So the assumptions, uh, if you look online, you'll see more formalized versions of these assumptions. I want to just give you the in a nutshell version. So in a nutshell, there's two assumptions. The first is stationarity. So stationarity is something we saw in time series videos. Maybe you're more familiar with it in that concept. But uh, it really has the same definition in spatial stats. So stationarity says that if I look at any small chunk of the island, I should get the same attributes, such as the mean of the elevations and the same uh, volatility or standard deviation of the elevation. So there should be no chunk of the island where the elevation is changing a lot more rapidly than other chunks of the island. So that's the idea behind stationarity. The other important one is a constant variogram. So now that we talked about the variogram, we can um, look at what this constant variogram means. This variogram is basically a relation between the distance between two points and the difference in their elevations. We're basically saying that no matter which little chunk of the island we look at, our variogram should look pretty much the same. So whether I look at this chunk of the island, I look at this chunk of the island, or this chunk of the island, the variogram, or the change in elevation based on change in distance between two locations, should be about the same. If these assumptions are met, if it's stationary and if it has a constant variogram, then we're safe to use the Kriging model, and we can use it. Um, even if these assumptions are not met, we can always do some kind of transformations to try and get our data to be more stationary or have a more constant variogram. Um, some basic ones would be like taking the log of the data or taking the square root of the data. Um, there's more complicated stuff you can do in stats to coerce data to these conditions. But whatever you had to do to get it to those conditions, once it's there, you're safe to use this really cool thing called the Kriging model. And actually the last thing I want to do is talk about um, the pros and cons of the Kriging model. First, one of the biggest pros is that the Kriging model gives us not just an estimate of like elevation at a certain point, but it also has a built-in feature, which we didn't talk about, but it has a built-in feature that gives you the error at that point. So you can say that this is my prediction and this is on average how off I think I am. So it gives you this nice error built into the model. One of the biggest cons of the Kriging model is the computational intensity or how long it takes to get these weights. Because if you notice, these weights that we found using solving this linear equation are very specific to these five points because this A is constructed using uh, the gamma function between pairs of these five points and this B is constructed using gamma function of our new point with each of these five points. So if I decide that I want to predict my uh, elevation somewhere else and use a different set of five points, then my entire linear equations have to change, which means I have to resolve uh, this matrix inversion, which can be very costly. So basically, uh, every set of weights is really only good for predicting one point. So if I'm predicting like hundreds of points, then I have to do hundreds of matrix inversions, which could be very expensive. So that's the pros and cons of the Kriging model. These are the assumptions of the Kriging model, and this is the Kriging model itself. So hopefully that helped you to get a good gentle introduction into spatial stats and the Kriging model, especially the variogram, because that's something that's used not just in the Kriging model, but in a lot of areas of spatial stats. So again, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Just put them in the comments below. Go ahead and like and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.